morning everyone so it's been a busy few days here well not even here just for me I'm not sure if I told you guys that my mom has actually been in the process of moving down here buying a house and moving down here over the past couple of months but this weekend was the final push we were up there um, this is back where I used to live in Camarillo so that was actually a really busy day I woke up at or left here at 5 a.m by myself uh, to make the car ride up there. Took me about three hours. Traffic wasn't too bad except for always in LA. My sister, brother-in-law, aunt and uncle, and uh, my sister's in-laws were all there, and my dad were all there to help load the truck up. So we loaded it up. Didn't take too long actually, and we were back on the road by one o'clock. Took us five hours to get back, and then we unloaded most of the truck that was all in one day so I got home I was completely tired I had filmed uh, most of my videos in advance but I came home and found a mess in my vegetable garden the first thing I noticed were the strawberries were like completely dried up like they just looked almost dead they're okay now but it wasn't a pretty sight then I noticed the carrots, which had looked really healthy, were looking dead. Some had mildew, uh, just not the way they looked a few days prior. But the most surprising thing was the sweet potatoes. They were wilted. Now, sweet potatoes can take heat. I mean, they can take a lot of heat. And it was hot this weekend. They're looking better now too, starting to die off a little bit, but it's almost harvest time anyway. But I was like, what is going on? So I came over here and checked the water. And I have two of these Beehive Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, whatever, timers, and they were off. Don't know how that happens, but they were off. Don't know how long they've been off, but they were off. The Mediterranean herb garden, the hedges, the fig tree, and this tropical bed here, they were all off as well. I noticed the newer fig leaves were crisped up and the sun patients, especially these over here in this corner, were completely wilted down because this beehive timer was off also. Although good thing this is a Mediterranean garden and have plants that don't need a lot of water because look at them, they look actually really good. So just for fun, I decided to go over on the other side of the house and take a look at the fourth beehive timer and see what was going on over there. There weren't any visible signs of dryness. However, it was off as well. Come to find out, the batteries in pretty much all of them, because they were all set up at the same time, were at 25%. Well, 25% to me, first of all, sounds like they've still got life in them, but it wasn't until I replaced all the batteries that I was able to turn them back on. Not only that, but wouldn't you think, since it is a Bluetooth device and it is hooked to my phone, that I would have gotten some sort of notification that A, batteries were too low, or B, they were off. No, no notification whatsoever. Am I the only one who has issues with Bluetooth timers? Please let me know in the comments because I've gone through several brands and I have not yet found one that works consistently, reliably. I'm this close to switching back to all these old fashioned types that are very straightforward, easy to use, and reliable. Now I know I had an issue with this system, but it wasn't the timer. The first time it was the valve outside that was broken right before we left. And then the second time it was because of user error, not turning one of the zones on in the very beginning. ADHD moment. Look at this pumpkin. So getting home and seeing all of this and just being fed up with the hot weather. I've already been pulling some summer plants out, but I think I'm about ready to just yank it all. I'm kind of fed up with the summer garden. You guys get like that? It usually happens to me around this time of year every year. Squash plants look the best, but I've got several in different spots that I'm gonna rip out. 
These green onions are way over. They're gone. I already took out the cucumbers. Some of the tomatoes I'm gonna take out. There's a couple things I'm trialing that I'm gonna leave alone. The peppers, of course, I'm gonna hold over and keep to grow next year. Um, and if you didn't know you could do that, I'll put a link down in the video description where I show how. Doesn't matter where you live. But none of this is gonna to happen today because we've still got a couple of hot days left. Uh, and I'm not gonna be out here doing that in that weather. So today I thought it would be a great day to be inside and I thought it might be fun to plan the vegetable garden for fall, the fall vegetable garden, plan that together. And hopefully it will inspire you to do a fall garden. This is the perfect time. Let me know in the comments if you've done a fall garden and if you love it, because I love it more than the summer garden. There are different things you can grow, um, probably more things you can grow than in summer and certainly there's a lot less negatives. Heat, pests and disease, all those things are pretty much gone in the fall winter garden. Now to get you started, other than this video, I did a video yesterday on next level gardening about things you can plant in September, wherever you are. So the first thing we have to do is map it out. Now I used to use graph paper and make everything to scale. Not anymore. Basically draw out the beds like that, relatively to scale, but not really, just shows where they are and the shape. Next thing I do is actually get out into the garden and look and see what beds have perennials that I'm gonna be keeping in there so I know not to plan anything for those beds. So the right side of these three beds have asparagus, which is doing really well, I might add. This side of this middle bed has carrots, which will be coming out soon. Up there, strawberries, those are perennials, so those are gonna stay. The chives are gonna stay at the end of each of those beds. Peppers will stay there. So other than those areas, it's pretty much a free-for-all where I want to plant. So I'm going to write those in. So these two top beds here with the tomato trellis, once the tomatoes are gone, and I'm gonna be putting in a third bed down at the end. So this will be three beds here. I'm gonna use the same strings and hooks that I use for the tomatoes for my peas. So I'm gonna grow an entire row of peas all the way along the back of this entire section. So in the front of this whole section, I'm gonna be growing flowers. Flowers are great to attract the pollinators and beneficials, especially in the cooler months. They don't have a lot to choose from to eat. So if we can give them more of those, they're gonna come here and take care of all my plants for me. So I'm gonna be sticking with warm colors because this is the Mediterranean garden. I saved my cool colors for up in the cottage garden. So in this bed in front of the peas, I'm gonna have calendula. What are all the bugs? You don't have those in the winter garden. Calendula, goldenrod, uh, scarlet peony poppies and nasturtium. So that should give a lot of nice color here up at the top of the garden. Now these are my two fabric raised beds uh, from Grassroots. Right now they're sweet potatoes, but I already dug down and found some really big ones. So harvest time is not that far off. So once those are out of there, I'm gonna use both of those beds, they're four by four, and I'm gonna grow cilantro. Now I know a lot of you just freaked out. It's okay, I love cilantro, Emily doesn't, but we still get along. And I'm growing so much of it because it bolts very fast. However, I learned that you can freeze dry it to take advantage, uh, it, it, it retains the color, the flavor, everything is the same, the nutrient value. So I'm gonna grow a whole bunch of it and then freeze dry it and then maybe grow another crop and freeze dry that. We'll see. So those beds are cilantro. So last fall on Next Level Gardening, I did a video on planting potatoes in the fall. It was the first time I'd ever done that. And I got, and I did another video a few months later showing the harvest and I got a really good harvest out of it. So I'm gonna be doing three full beds, four by 10 beds of potatoes. And so that'll be these three right here. Everything's gonna be gone from these beds except for the chives in the front. So the rest of it's gonna be potatoes. And I'll probably do the Ruth Stout method again, just burying potatoes under straw, no dig. It's really easy. And the experiment I did last year, doing them three different ways, that way worked just as well as digging trenches and planting them. So let's go with the easy stuff. So potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Oh. Peas, 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 flowers. So that takes care of the upper terrace and the second terrace. 
So this bed over here is mostly peppers. I will plant in around there, maybe with some lettuce, maybe with some garlic. I'm gonna fill this entire middle bed here with garlic. This bed right here, it's gonna be completely emptied out. This is where the cabbages are gonna go so I can make some nice uh, sauerkraut, which I love. And that leaves the three beds on the bottom terrace. Oh, and where these carrots are. And then there's some spot down there in front of the asparagus. So I think we'll put some turnips in here and we'll put some carrots down there. And then the three beds at the bottom, I'm gonna fill with broccoli. Because of the trees down here in the winter, that does get some afternoon shade. So it's not a full day of sun. However, I grew a huge amount of big broccoli at my last house with that amount of sun. So broccoli is something that can take a little bit of shade. I would say you need to at least give it four hours of direct sun and then maybe a couple of hours of filtered sun. So all three of these beds will be broccoli. All right, so I've got the entire thing filled in. These bugs, honestly. So now I just have to go through my seeds that I've already got to make sure I have what I need, the varieties that I want of these things, and order any that I don't have. So a few videos back, we went to Walter Anderson Nursery and went to see the corpse flower, which was really cool. Um, while we were there, I got some bearded iris. So I wanted to get those in the ground today. So on the right side of the path coming up to the chicken coop, I've got a lot of bearded iris here. So I want to match that on the other side of the path. All right, so I've got five bearded iris here to plant. I'll probably be getting more. This is how they come. They're, they're dry, their roots are dry. So there's three parts you need to know about. The roots, the rhizome, and the leaves. Now, depending on where you are, you could change the way you plant these. So if you live in a place like me that is pretty dry, gets little, very little rain, mostly in the winter, uh, you have good drainage, and it's warm for most of the year, then you can plant these any old way. You just want to make sure the crown where the rhizome meets the leaves is out of the soil a little bit. Uh, if you live where you don't have the best drainage, you might have a wetter climate, it's not so warm most of the year, then you want to plant these. So my fingers are the soil level. You want all the roots under the soil, but you want the rhizome on top, preferably facing south, so the sun can really bake it and that's what this is gonna love. I'm gonna loosen up the soil and get some Neptune's Harvest crab and lobster and kelp meal. Have a, I'll put a link to that down below. You can get a discount. And I'm gonna leave this tag on here because that corresponds with the variety that I have to look at the picture on my phone to find out what that is so I can make a tag. But I'm gonna take off some of the dead leaves. Now this whole thing looks dead, but as you can see, there's a new leaf coming out right there. So once these get in the ground and get watered, it's gonna grow even faster. So when we're gonna place this in the soil, you wanna know which way to put it. Now, like I said, Preferably, this will be in, in the sun, facing south. So you might want to remember that if you live in a climate where it's cold and rainy. Here it doesn't matter so much, but you also want to know that this plant is going to continue to grow the way the leaves grow. This rhizome is just going to get longer and it's going to keep branching out that way. So we don't want to put it here like this at the edge because it's going to want to go this way. So we're going to turn it around. these roots underneath Just like that now if you're digging up and dividing your own and we'll probably do that next year these aren't ready for that um, there's gonna be some tall leaves on it this isn't enough to anchor those tall leaves. So if you bought them that way, or if you divide your own and you've got leaves on here, you wanna cut them off at about six inches because those are gonna act as a sail. And any wind is gonna come along, blow that, and pull these right out of the ground. Uh, these are fine the way they are.
So I'm finally getting back to these trees that had blown over. This green tape did not work, obviously. So I got these straps and I was gonna you know, put them like this and screw a screw through here, but I didn't have any washers big enough for the screw not to slip through the hole. So I think what I'm gonna do is use some wire best to put a little twist in this to keep this from in the wind it could rub on this post if it was just like that but if it's twisted this gives a little bit of a buffer zone I just saw something I need you guys to help me with you see these prints in the dirt here that's not a coyote that's big it's like it's as big as the palm of my hand What would that be? Hopefully just a really big dog. So let me know guys if you're gonna do a fall garden with me. I'm telling you right now, if you're so sick and tired of the summer garden, just get a fresh perspective. Go out there in your garden with a pad of paper and a pen and just plan. Whether it becomes something or not, if you plan it, I'll bet you'll be inspired. I'll see you next time.